Welcome to this week's GCN Tech Clinic. If you're not familiar with how this works, think of it as a cycling agony aunt section. You simply send in your questions and problems and I try and help you out as best as I can. So let's go to our first question. This is from Simon Wood who says, Hey guys and Manon, I bought a Garmin Tax Flux Smart Trainer second hand. It's in great shape and barely used. I've set it up correctly, but the issue I'm facing is that when I put my bike on the trainer, the derailleurs are so misaligned with the trainer cassette that I have to make it all work and completely readjust the derailleurs to compensate. This defeats the concept of dropping my wheel out and popping the bike on the trainer. Garmin Tech Support said, them's the brakes, apparently, whatever that means. Is this normal to have to completely calibrate the derailleur when putting your bike on a smart trainer? Unfortunately, this is a common problem. You see the spacing between the hub on the trainer and hubs on the wheels that you have in your bike do tend to differ ever so slightly and it is common to have to index and adjust your derailleur ever so slightly. If you are finding this is something that drives you crazy or it's a long way out, you could try spacing out one of the cassettes, be that the one on the trainer or the one on your wheel to move it slightly outboard and with a bit of trial and error, replacing different width shims behind the cassette, you could hopefully get the two cassettes to match up and so solve your problem of not having the uh, index in the same. It's a bit of a trial and error solution, but you might find your local bike shop has a selection of different spacers that you could put behind the cassette to try and, uh, try and solve that. So I wish you the best of luck and uh, stick at it and you might get it sorted. Our next question in is from EB. So they say, hi Alex. Because my partner and I use the same turbo trainer, God, another indoor training one, I have to regularly switch between our bikes. I try to be careful, but every now and again, the rear disc rotor scuffs the frame. Oh, oh, I hate it when that happens. And we're both losing paint. Do you have any tips to avoid this? Thanks a million. Yeah, number one tip, be super careful. That's the most obvious thing that you can do. It is gonna happen. Unfortunately, when you are taking the rear wheel in and out of the bike a lot, the disc rotor is gonna catch the frame and it's heartbreaking when it happens. Now and again, it happens to me. The best tip I can give you is to try to get a sticker or some clear tape, which you can put over the frame and then that'll help protect it. There's a really tough clear tape. I think it's called helicopter tape, which has been around for absolutely years and is renowned for being super tough and super sticky. So try and, uh, try and find some of that and I think that'll help you out. Next question in is from Doug Hungerford, it says, would it be possible to fix that little white speck of blue on the wall just below the handlebars? It's driving me nuts. Um, well, I can see it. A little bit of news um, for you is that we're gonna redesign GCN Tech Megabase in the coming weeks. So we'll get that, we'll get that sorted for you. There you go, Doug. Next question is from Nathan Forresto says, what differences would you make fit-wise on a gravel bike compared to a road bike. Well, I would suggest to try to mimic your position fairly similarly. You don't want to get on the bike and feel like it's completely different. But for me personally, I would make a couple of changes. I would use a slightly wider handlebar and a slightly shorter stem. These two changes will bring your the handlebars in slightly towards you and put your body in a more upright position. This should help shift your weight slightly further back and give you that extra feeling of a bit of stability and control on the bike, which is ideal for when you're out gravel riding. So they're the changes I would make, but I wouldn't do anything too drastic because you don't want to take away from the position that you've got used to from your road bike. Our next question is from David Morton, who says, does gearing affect your speed at a set power? Hmm, slightly confused by this. For example, if you're pedaling at 200 watts in a 52 chain ring and an 11 tooth sprocket, will you be faster than 200 watts in a 34 ring, a 30 and th an 11 tooth sprocket. Well, those are completely different gears. So if you're talking about gear ratios and how fast you can ride, of course, in a larger chain ring, you're gonna go much faster. But I think what you're referring to is the difference in gear ratios for if you had comparable gear ratios achieved in a different way. So it might be using, I don't know, the large chain ring on the front and the middle of the cassette at the back, whereas you could have the same gearing using a small chain ring and being towards the bottom of the cassette. In that instance, 200 watts is 200 watts. It doesn't matter, that's the input that you put into the bike. The only slight difference, and it's very small, is the difference that you'll have from chain efficiency. So if you're riding in a quite an extreme gear, so the large chain ring and the large sprocket at the back, if a chain isn't running very straight, 
and it's going to lose you a tiny few watts. But the difference between it is so minimal. Effectively, 200 watts is 200 watts, and the difference in gearing isn't going to make much difference at all. Right, next question in is from Imi, who says, Dear Alex, Ollie, and Manon, please help. My Shimano Di2 keeps emptying the battery overnight. I took it to a local bike shop who have replaced the battery, but the problem keeps persisting. A full charge only lasts a few hours. Any ideas what could be causing this? Could it be related to my Wahoo? Not sure what it could be. Firmware is up to date and it's well maintained. The shifters aren't being accidentally pressed and I always disconnect from the bike when using the eTube app. Well, it sounds to me like there is a drain somewhere in the system through one of the components. It's most likely to be either the rear derailleur or the front derailleur. Now, replacing the battery, as you've said, hasn't solved the issue. It tends to be that there's a component gradually drawing a little bit of current from the battery and that's what's wearing it down. You could check all of the different components to see if there's a fault with any of the electronic systems. So you could use the eTube app or take it to your local bike shop and they could use the Shimano Diagnostics software because the software that the bike shops have is a little bit more in-depth than what is available to consumers and riders. But the easiest solution that I can offer is to charge the bike up and then overnight to try and unplug different individual components. Sort of do it on a one component per night basis. That way you can try to isolate individual components and you'll soon find out when you go to your bike in the morning and the battery isn't flat. Just remember which order of individual components you've unplugged and um, that is a bit of a trial and error method and hopefully that should solve your issue. When you find the item that you've unplugged and the battery stops going flat, that's what it's likely that you're gonna to need to replace. There you go. Next question, and I think it's our final question this week, is, oh yeah, I saw this, it's from Wolfport Armoury, it says, Laurent, stops, stop with all the capitals. Um, basically, the other week a person commented saying they weren't very happy with the use of all of the capitals on our fancy new on-screen graphics. But it turns out that week, the person that edited the video didn't use the new graphics. So basically, the joke was on me, because I said no, I'm gonna carry on using them. And, um, well, we didn't use them, so there you go. Well, that concludes this week's GCN Tech Clinic. Turns out I'm the loser this week, and if you want to answer or ask any more questions, keep submitting them in the comments section down below using the hashtag AskGCNTech, and hopefully we'll pick them up and we'll get some next week. See you later.